The Ministry of Health or MOH says it will no longer be mandatory to wear a mask outdoors and practice physical distancing starting this Sunday, in line with the relaxation of COVID-19 rules. Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin said in a briefing today that mask wearing will still be mandatory indoors, including on public transport and e-hailing rides. And while not required, the wearing of masks is still encouraged in crowded outdoor spaces, such as night markets and stadiums. Meanwhile, my Sajastra check-ins will no longer be compulsory and individuals may enter premises and public areas regardless of their vaccination status. This doesn't mean that the MySuggestra app can be uninstalled. Kyrie said it is still required to show an individual's risk status as premise owners must check their visitors' health status and turn away those who are categorised as high risk and those under the home surveillance order. While the seven-day quarantine remains for COVID-19 cases, Kyrie said these individuals will have the option to undergo a supervised rapid antigen test on the fourth day. If they test negative, they may be released from quarantine. As for travellers, the fully vaccinated and children aged 12 and below are exempted from pre-departure and on-arrival tests. MOH is also doing away with the requirement for COVID-19 insurance for all inbound travellers. Finally, nightclubs will be allowed to operate starting May 15th, with the scrapping of the National Security Council's negative list. French Defence and Security Group Talus has reportedly been charged with complicity in bribery over a 2002 sale of submarines to Malaysia. Citing sources close to the inquiry, AFP reported that the long-running case investigating alleged kickbacks was opened in 2010 and eventually caught up with former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Razak. Najib was the defence minister when the deal was signed to buy two Scorpion-class submarines and one Augusta submarine from French naval dockyard unit DCN, now part of Talus, in a deal worth 1.2 billion US dollars. Najib's close associate Abdul Razak Baginda allegedly acted as an advisor on the deal and was accused of disguising the kickback of more than 114 million euros as consulting work by a firm in which he was the largest shareholder. The money was then said to have been given to Najib. Abdul Razak was charged in France in 2017, while Najib has been questioned by MACC investigators. AFP said in total, nine defendants, including Talis, have been charged in France and the probe was closed in January 2022. Talis told AFP it strongly contests these allegations. Malaysia Marine and Heavy Engineering Holdings, or MHB, has inked a strategic alliance with Singapore headquartered Dynamac Holdings for a consortium agreement to cooperate and jointly bid on targeted international projects. The deal was signed between the two companies' subsidiaries, Malaysia Marine and Heavy Engineering and Dynamac Engineering Services. In a statement today, the firms said the partnership will jointly offer one-stop solutions for module fabrication, vessel conversion and integration works, as well as other projects of mutual interest. MHB CEO Pandai Othman said the strategic alliance will enable the group to combine its capacity and capability with Dynamax experience to jointly support customers' demand. Dynamax CEO and Executive Director Lim Ah Cheng said that through the agreement, it will be able to increase its capacity to execute projects beyond its Singapore yards, while MHB will be able to capitalise on its yard capacity and capability to support in realising a shared vision and addressing market demands. Technical rubber compound provider GIIB Holdings has announced a further 14-day suspension of Wang Wing Yu as one of its executive directors. It said an external independent auditor has just started an investigation into Wang's previous handling of the company's accounts. GIIB said in a burst filing that the extension of Wang's suspension took effect from yesterday. 
According to the group's annual report, he was responsible for managing its finance and accounting operations. In a separate voice filing, GIIB said it would also be changing its financial year end from December 31, 2021 to June 30, 2022, mainly to facilitate the investigation into the management, accounts and handling of the company and its subsidiaries' glove business. It said the next set of audited financial statements shall be covering 18 months from January 1, 2021 to June 30, 2022. In a third board's filing today, GIIB revealed that the High Court has granted an ad interim injunction order restraining Globex's latex glove manufacturer, the main contractor of GIIB Healthcare's glove production lines, from proceeding with a winding up petition against its unit pending the disposal of an originating summons. The High Court fixed June 27, 2022 as the hearing date, following case management yesterday. GIIB's shares closed 6.3% lower today at 7.5 cent, valuing the company at 44.35 million ringgit. Unisa Malaysia booked an 11.6% year-on-year increase in first quarter FY22 net profit on the back of higher sales volume as well as improvement in average selling prices. In a bourse filing, the semiconductor assembly and test player said quarterly earnings stood at 50.69 million ringgit, while revenue rose by 13.5% to 424.45 million ringgit. On a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, Unisem's net profit slipped 11.7% from 57.45 million ringgit in the fourth quarter of FY21, while top line was flattish, down by some 0.5% from 426.39 million ringgit in the immediate preceding quarter. The company did not declare any dividend. On its prospects, Unisem said it expects its performance to be satisfactory and demand for its products and services to remain strong for the next financial quarter. At the close, Unisem's shares fell 1.78% to 2 ringgit 76 for a market value of 4.45 billion ringgit. 